Question 5 then from the 2022 Higher Maths Paper 2, 7 mark question. Composition of functions. Function of a function. What have we got here? Two functions, f and g, are given by these little expressions here. Very nice looking little expressions there. And you have to find f of g of x and then g of f of x. Two marks, one mark. Well, just start off with what g of x says. g of x is 3x plus 5. Optum's just replaced it, but in fact, that gets you the first mark. Whereas the tricky part isn't just replacing this with what it says, it's interpreting that. Because what this part says is, f acting on whatever you put in produces whatever you've put in squared, take away 2. So f acting on this will produce that squared, take away 2. And that happened to be 3x plus 5. Now, there's the second mark already, according to the Martin scheme. It doesn't feel finished though, does it? You may as well just multiply that out anyway, because that's only square a bracket. Square the first. 9x squared. Twice the product, 15, goes up to 30x. Square the last, 25. Take away the 2. And there you are. Plus 23. I'd have thought that would have been the last mark. Now, there's only one mark for this one now, because you're just doing the same thing all over again. The principle's the same. So g of f of x means g of x squared minus 2. And what does g do to whatever gets hold of? It does 3 times it. So 3 times it plus 5. 3 times the x squared minus 2 plus 5. Now, again, according to the Martin scheme, that's sufficient to get the mark. Well, the rest is just multiplying it out. 3x squared minus 6 plus 5, minus 1. Part B then. Determine the range of values of x for which f of g of x is less than g of f of x. Well, you've already worked them out in the first part. So here we just put them in. So popping in what you found in the first part, 9x squared, 30x and 23, that's to be less than the 3x squared, another quadratic expression, minus 1. Now, doing that gets the first mark. So if you hadn't done it in the first part, you'd have to do it here just to get that first mark. So I suppose it all balances out. Now, that's quite clearly a quadratic, but not a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic inequation. But nevertheless, the way you deal with it is you still take it all over to one side and have just 0 left on this side. So 9 take away 3 will be 6x squared. There's no other x term, so that's 30x, multiples of 6 so far. Take the one across, they're all multiples of 6. Well, that's quite handy. It's quite handy because the way that you solve this is still the same way. Factorise it, because the 0 is still the important part. So there's a common factor of 6 will pop out. That will leave a 5x and a 4. That now factorises quite nicely x, x, multiply to give 4 and add to give 5, that'll be 1 and 4 and everything's positive. Now, I've already gone through another one of the marks. Rearranging it just a quadratic inequation gets a mark. Now, the answer isn't x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 4 because they, that would equal 0. You want the answer to be less than 0. So don't just say, oh, well, in that case, instead of x equals negative 1, don't just make it x is less than negative 1 and x is less than negative 4, because that wouldn't work. Because a negative times a negative makes a positive, so they wouldn't be less than 0. Now, the way that you should deal with this is just think of a picture of the answers. If you draw the graph of this, or just a sketch of the graph of this, it will show you when the answers would be positive or negative. You've got a positive x squared quadratic. That's the correct way around. The wee happy face you might remember it as. This part here is useful because it tells you where it cuts the x-axis. Now, the y-axis doesn't actually matter in this part. So it cuts at negative 4, and it cuts at negative 1. Now, getting those two numbers is important. So that's a mark. You get a mark for finding the values of x for which the whole expression comes to 0. But then what this picture shows you is then that between negative 1 and 4, any x there gives you a negative answer. But you're not including the negative 4, so I'll put a hollow circle there, and you're not including the negative 1, 
because they would give you zero and this doesn't include zero. So the answer to this is just x has to be less than the negative 1 or greater than the negative 4. Now, you could answer that without a sketch. A sketch is really handy. That's perhaps the quickest way because it's a visualisation of it. But you could answer it by just thinking through this process. What would I have to have in order to have a negative answer? Well, quite clearly, one of them would, since 6 is positive and won't influence the result, one of them would have to be positive and one of them would have to be negative in order to give a negative answer. So you could think it through as saying, well, if that's to be positive, that means x would have to be greater than negative 1. If that's to be negative, x would have to be less than negative 4. That has to happen at the same time, so that can't be. You can't have a number which is both greater than negative 1 and less than negative 4. So that's out. Well, what about the other way around? Well, would it work if that was negative and that was positive? Well, if that was negative, x would have to be less than negative 1. If that was positive, x would have to be greater than negative 4, and that does work, so that's the one. But how do you write that down? You can't really write write down that thought process. But you could, but it's possible. You can think through to the answer if the mark was just for stating the result. The way of doing that would be to make up a table. Now, this is by far the quickest way. So your table would include those zeros. And then you would just think, right, what happens all the way in between if that's x? What have you got for all of these factors? I've put the 6 down there anyway. It doesn't really make any difference. If it was a negative 6, it would make a difference, but it won't. I just want to know whether these parts would be positive or negative. So that's obviously positive. Well, 6 is always positive, no matter where you put the numbers. What about x plus 1? Well, when x is negative 1, that's 0. Pick anything higher than that, add 1 onto it, and it goes positive. Anything less, and it's always negative. x plus 4, well, that'll be 0 there. Pick a number higher than negative 4, it'll flip positive. Pick a number less, it'll go negative. Now what happens when you multiply them all together? Two negatives make a positive, that's 0. Only one negative, it's negative, that's a 0, and that's positive. Now you can see the answers, it's the same as this here. It's negative between these two zeros. It's negative between negative 1 and 4. So you could do that instead of that, but look, that is so much easier. Plus, there's possibilities of making mistake with your figures here, for instance, whereas that picture, the graph is a picture of all the answers.